Before I had a child, I uh, I thought I couldn't live my live my life the same. What's up? Error? Dirty butt. Camera. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> When I first got pregnant, I didn't think I could go for walks because I think that would be harmful for the baby. I was so uh, afraid I would hurt the baby so that I, I would basically just sit. <laughs> um, and then I realized that it's okay to go for walks and it's okay to bicycle. And I felt so comfortable that I could do acro yoga while I was uh, eight months pregnant and it was fine and it was beautiful. And then in the beginning, I thought I couldn't really travel or do so much but the more I've been traveling or the more we've been doing amazing adventures it's just giving me so many new gifts so the more I've been traveling and taking new steps to um, to challenge myself and in the comfort of like staying in one place and having a, a beautiful nice home and like going away and uh, going on holidays or journeys uh, it's just been giving me so, many, so much new inspiration to live life fully and never take a step back because you, I don't know, because you're a parent or because you have uh, some kind of limits in your everyday life. Knowing no matter how your situation is, no matter how your life looks like, you can still do what you dream about. And we are watching beautiful sunsets over the ocean, feeling the the beautiful warmth from the sun and the beautiful warmth from a culture where people involve in spiritual practices and in believing in praying every morning for happiness and health and just being inspired by these people and knowing that I can live my dreams and we co-create uh, this beautiful everyday life that we are creating, um, me and Sander, and I couldn't dream for anything else. I'm truly living my dream life in a tropical paradise surrounded by friends and warmth from the culture and people and I have so much help, I have so much access to this life force from the earth and feeling happy and inspired every morning when I wake up because I, I dare to follow my dreams and everyone has access to this. We just have to tap into what we really want and what we feel is important to us and go for it. And then uh, life unfolds in magical ways. Um, it's important to trust. Like you should remember three things and it, it's to trust that every step will unfold naturally. You cannot plan it. You cannot plan life. Every day is a sign of that. So just having trust that everything will work out and um, being open to receiving these gifts that lives give you. And having a, the third thing is to have a spiritual practice, which is whatever it is, if it's going skiing or dancing or doing yoga or med and meditating every day. Meditation is a big one. You're tapping into your body, into uh, your breath every day and connecting to your higher self. It's what keeps me grounded. And also being okay when you have days when you don't have time for it. Acceptance. That was four things. <laughs> For the people who are maybe living in a life where they feel like it trapped. sounds perfect and they're trapped, um, can you understand them? Do you ha did you have times like where it was tough for you too, where you didn't have any acceptance or anything? Like, do you have any advice? I've uh, I've had big moments where I felt trapped, where I felt depressed, where I felt like I don't see a way out of this. I don't know. I don't feel like I want to keep living the way I am because it's just boring and I don't feel that inspiration in life. I feel like I I don't have any I don't feel my life purpose. I don't feel I don't feel any reason to do anything. And I think the cause like the reason why I was feeling that was because I wasn't living I wasn't living in bliss. I wasn't fulfilling my life purpose. Comments thing. I was feeling trapped before because of the way my life looked like and how I uh, didn't acknowledge all the signs that I needed to make a change. So I went into, uh, I went into like states of depression where I didn't feel like I wanted to move on. Um, I remember that when I was little, before when I was going to school and I felt that school was nothing that I was 12 years old and I didn't want to go to school. I didn't want to live. I was so upset with life. I had so many philosophical 
dilemmas like what's the purpose of life what's the reason and this can come in any stage of life no matter where you are if you are 12 or if you are uh, 50 and you want to make a life change or or at 95 um, you can still feel like your something is lacking you how to get out of it is simply to make a change make small changes make a big change if you make small changes they will lead you to a bigger change if you're just feeling brave and daring and knowing that you can trust the universe to unfold in magical ways and if you're feeling um, trapped and that you have you can see people doing their thing and living their life and they can do it because they are they are just doing it it's not true because everyone can do it everyone can everyone has access to this amazing <laughs> life path that's so everyone has access to their own inner strength to change life a way to bring changes into your life is to start listening into yourself what you feel needs changing difficult sometimes to listen and be true to yourself well that's where you have the teachers sometimes it can be hard to listen in and knowing what's the truth and what needs to be changed but that's when you have teachers that's when you have workshops that's when you have amazing <laughs> retreats or 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 people that inspires you they can inspire you and give you a little push in the right direction and then maybe you start implementing these changes and your life will uh, look different. When I was feeling states of depression or feeling trapped, I was thinking maybe if I move or if I change job or do something like this, things will change. But I cannot really change things on an external level. You have to change the, the own uh, vibration on your internal level then you can start bringing meditation into your life or whatever yoga you need and that will create the change. How do you go to the now? So you were traveling before you had Zander? Oh wow, well, um, different places, uh, mostly around I was living in Africa, in East Africa, and I've been traveling along the coast of East Africa, and I've been in South America and Caribbean and around Europe, and mostly living in Southeast Asia. You've been in Hawaii as well? And Hawaii, and California, and North America. But there's so many places I wish to see. But when the timing is right, you feel it. Do you think travel traveling makes something with you? Does it give an impact also for your inside? Yes and no. Sometimes I go on a travel to change how I'm feeling inside and it doesn't change. It just amplifies, it makes it bigger. Like if I'm feeling restless or not grounded and I go traveling, it makes me more restless because I see perspective by seeing a different culture, a little boy going on a boat in a canal and a different village full of kids and they're, how they interact with each other and their parents. And then I see them and it gives me perspective of how my life is. And, and then all of a sudden I don't feel any change and I thought I would have change. And then if I just go to the like cheap hotel room and meditate, that's when all the change happens. Sometimes you look for, like we were talking about before, when you look for a change in your outer world, you need to change on the inside as well. And the way you can do that is just by solitude, being alone and looking inwards, breathing. I usually have a good yoga practice, like 90 minute or two hour of asanas and pranayama, and then you feel like your, your body gets a restart. Uh, every cell gets a restart because you simply pay attention to your to yourself and then you can really make a change and then of course you can enjoy traveling more and seeing new cultures and looking to different environments and um, I love seeing the red sand in Sri Lanka or like just like watching children play in different cultures and I was living in Kenya for a year and what what really made me surprised was how similar we are like all the new friends I got they were going through the exact same problems with boyfriends and girlfriends and the same feelings of jealousy and the curiosity and interested in, in the same type of things no matter where in the culture you live we're so similar that's why you don't really have to travel anywhere except that it's it's cool to get a change sometimes and see see beautiful nature because the nature is really different yeah, that's what's inspired me the most, like different nature phenomena, like beautiful sunsets or thunderstorms. Or I think I really like the tropics. <laughs> there are some moms out there 
who are having a child alone and they feel like um, depressed or something, do you have any words or anything to encourage them? First of all, I just want to say go, woohoo, go mamas, uh, super strong, uh, super inspiring, I admire you so much and I think you're doing the most amazing job because just being two parents is like, wow, it's a big challenge and it can be a struggle sometimes. And uh, I think the hardest part of like being a solo parent is that you always have all of the responsibility. Even if you have someone looking after your child for an hour, you still, you still have all the responsibility. I really want to tell you that the most important thing is to know that everything is okay and doing your best is the only thing you can do and your best changes so when you're feeling sick or tired your best is your best and when you're feeling super full of energy that's also your best but it changes it's not the same and being okay and just doing whatever you can is the most important thing and read a book from Don Miguel Ruiz The Four Agreements <laughs> no but seriously it's so good <laughs> Don Miguel Ruiz, uh, the four agreements. Don't take anything personal, be impeccable with your words, don't make assumptions and always do your best. Yeah, to all, to all single mamas, um, please ask for help and uh, be selfish. Go for that lunch by yourself when they're older and take care of yourself and treat yourself uh, in the best, very, very best way you can. In Germany, most parents do breastfeeding until six months, not more. But maybe you can tell how you feel about breastfeeding in general. You can tell about breastfeeding in the public. How do you feel if someone is looking? Uh, breastfeeding, it's so important. It's so natural. Your breast is giving the milk to the baby. So it's nothing to ever be ashamed about. It's it's life force it's the it's the growing fluid for your baby to to be healthy and it's so full of enzymes and vitamins and minerals and proteins and fats and everything that your baby needs to be super healthy so always feel really really good about breastfeeding uh, that this is how i feel in the beginning i thought i had all these different types of bras and t-shirts where you should hide your breast so that no one else sees it and you should put the baby somewhere under here and it always felt super unnatural to me and uh, I realized that I'm very very proud of my of my baby feeding and I don't ever want to feel different about that and I feel that it's important that he can feel the comfort and also if he's getting hurt it's it's so important to have the milk to ease the pain it's easing the pain of course if I'm in an open space and he falls and he wants to have the, the milk it's so important for him to have it and I wouldn't go away and hide to feed I would always do it in public it's the most natural thing and if someone has a problem with it that's their problem because I should never be ashamed about feeding my baby I've been breastfeeding um, now for one year and soon three months and I feel like it's uh, going really well and sometimes it feels too much but then it's okay to have those feelings as well but most of the times it's just feeling very uh, very nice and it feels like a beautiful connection to my baby and I will breastfeed until two years or as long as it feels uh, good for both of us if it doesn't feel good for any of us uh, we will make a change could you even imagine breastfeeding more than two years or never well I don't really have a plan even for the next month so two years is like really far away in the future. Uh, I have to reassess how it feels then. Uh, if I had more babies, maybe I could answer that question. But now I feel like two years feels good for me. But I support mothers and parents that want to breastfeed longer and shorter as well. And uh, super uh, big high five to all of the parents who are supporting breastfeeding openly. <laughs> is it a difference breastfeeding in Sweden and here? Do you have a different feeling while doing it? How does the society react? Yes, definitely it's different. Balinese people, they are more natural with everything, with life, I feel like. And in Sweden, we're, we're less used to a natural life somehow, which is so sad. I don't feel as comfortable breastfeeding around Swedish people as I do in around Balinese people. But I'm not letting it affect me. I would definitely breastfeed anywhere uh, open and publicly in Sweden. And if someone has a problem with that, as I said, that's their problem. It's what we have to feed 
uh, our children and it's so important but yeah there's a difference and uh, I encourage every uh, mom to to breastfeed openly no matter where they are so we can change this so it's all natural did you ever have any bad experience with breastfeeding like people telling anything no sorry I haven't had that experience <laughs> I think mostly because I don't, I don't look at anyone else. I don't, I don't leave any space for anyone to make a comment. I don't leave any space for anyone to, to say something. Like, cause it's the most natural thing, and I feel so proud about it. So, maybe if I would feel more, if I would feel uncertain, maybe someone would feel there's room to comment. But I don't leave any room for any comments, cause it's, it's the way it should be, and it's the way our culture should be evolving naturally. Did you ever have a clue of having a child? before oh wow i never thought it would be this beautiful magical journey that it is i thought it was just like raising a child and that they would be just their own children but we're so connected and i feel that we're connected on such a deep spiritual level and we can feel each other's energy and what i found super interesting is that when my energy is low if i've slept too little he will be more like grumpy or annoyed with small things then if I have a higher level of energy and he's upset it passes very quickly because we're connected so if I'm happy he's happier and that's why it's even more important to take care of yourself so that you feel healthy and happy because then your child is affected by that and before I had a child I I never knew any of this and I wasn't prepared at all that it would be such a roller coaster journey of like up and downs together and I definitely didn't think it would be this beautiful. How you're running your business now like half half? So money is a really important thing in our society. Money is a way to show gratitude. Like when you pay for something it's it's money that you've earned and to figure out how you could fulfill your dreams and still like afford to live the way you are you need to find a way to make an income that's inspiring to you if it's not inspiring you will feel like you're not you you're not as happy i love what i do i love what i teach and i would rather work less and make less money so i have more time to, to spend with my child and to have more time to just um to enjoy the beautiful things i've created uh, than to work more because money definitely doesn't make you happy so the most important thing that I wanted to say about money is that if you don't feel inspired by the way you make money, it's hard to be feeling fulfilled about life. So figure out what it is that you want to do and, and then try to make a living from it. Um, that's my biggest advice. The way you live in your lifestyle should come from um, a state where you feel inspired every day to wake up and make a living and not working just for the money. And the way to find this could be so many different uh, ways. But if you start traveling, you will be opening up to a bra brand new world that is uh, broader than you ever would think about the options to make money. And you will find people coming in the right moment where you need an opportunity and life can change. And it helps too if you believe that it's possible. Because it truly is. And never doubt it. Always have the trust in, in that every opportunity that you need will be coming in the right moment and then you act you act on it you act when you feel that there is a there's an opportunity that there's an opening and if it doesn't feel right you can change we can always change we are the creators of our own world you can always change anything that you that you need to change that's really what we're here to do do you have anything else you're hard to say you want to tell us to anyone I'm so happy, Sandhya, that you're giving me this chance to reach out to people that are living a conscious life or heading towards living a conscious lifestyle or traveling or fulfilling your dreams. I'm super grateful that I get to be on your journey and we get to share so many fun and cool and magical adventures together. And I'm so happy that you're, you're sharing your lives to, to inspire people all around the world and in Germany. I hope that we'll be following our lives and our sons get to grow up forever <laughs> okay Yami. thank you thank you so much thank you for answering all the questions thank you so much okay okay we can start <gasps> oh you've been so good Babu. <laughs> Yeah,
scratching your nose? Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> Wash your face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's white, so it's a bit tiny. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first wood you're showing. Yeah. This is Gabby. <laughs> and then this with the poo poo. <laughs> yeah, he's so cute. Better in person. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I cry. <laughs> oh, now you have dirt. <laughs> <laughs> Stitching up the open sky. You can find uh, everything about um, Acryoga on acryoga.org. And you can also send me an email if you need um, through Sandia. <laughs> Retreats are coming up. Yeah, I Masha. Love.